I've been testing. I've been striving to be able to formulate the best impressions video for my people so we can understand and have a feeling of what gaming streaming is at its earliest form. Kind of its earliest form. As biased as I may have sound it in the past. So bro, can you see the quality? If there's anything I can freaking say, it's the freaking quality. Even then, I was always still making it a point to, to, to label out the negatives, right, and be unbiased as much as possible. But the difference between me and most of the other people you'll find on the internet is they just have a pessimistic outlook on game streaming as in itself. Whereas I'm a bit different. I'm more optimistic on the subject. So to start this off, let me break it down for y'all. I tested Stadia in three distinct places. A place with good Wi-Fi. This place, place with decent Wi-Fi, that would be my parents' house during Thanksgiving break. I took my, all I had to do was take this, really. And then the third place is a place with bad Wi-Fi, and that would be a hotel. Let's call this a trifecta. <laughs> so we're going to go over them in order, and then I'm just going to give you my general feelings of each place, and then afterwards we'll talk as a whole more about the experience, uh, the gameplay, things like that. My place. So obviously I started here because this is when I first received the Stadia and um, if you remember in my setup video, if you watched it, I have about 500 up, uh, 500 down on Wired, whereas I'm about 200 up, 200 down on Wi-Fi, give or take, something like that. And so with that being said, with this whole review, every place was tested on wireless. And there's a couple reasons for that. The main one being that people maybe gamers seem to like assume and think that Ethernet is just so easy easily accessible like every place you go should have one immediately readily available for whatever you know what I mean no <laughs> I have lived in like guess three distinct places in PA specifically and in all three this is the only time that I've able really had access and I don't even really have it I have like a 40 or 50 foot Ethernet port, or, you know, Ethernet cord from my computer over to my router, right? I just live in a small apartment, so that's why it's possible. So I had to ensure that I tested game streaming in its most accessible and common habitat. Wireless. Moving forward, in my place, I used both Chromecast 4K, which came with my Founders Edition and the browser edition of Stadia. Contrary to what happened on in the setup video, which, uh, you know, that thing was just breaking down entirely. Unlike that, browser will give you just about the best experience, honestly. More importantly, input delay was essentially non-existent, right? Whenever you have it wired on a browser, honestly, it's one-to-one. -one. Only thing that's a bit iffy is the visuals, but I think it's because I have too big of a monitor and it's like bigger than 1080p and so it's kind of stretched out a little bit because I recorded it. You should see some gameplay. Mind, don't mind the, the lagginess. I don't know why my computer was lagging when recording it. Regardless, it was flawless and it actually did look good in the recording. The problem is, bro, the, the Chromecast 4K and then the TV combo for Stadia is just way too powerful. Like I've been saying and I mentioned before, I do not have anything capable of outputting the 4K besides maybe my PC. A 1080 Ti, I think it can, but the problem is this monitor is only 1080p, right? So my TV in the living room is the only place, but whenever I brought my PS4 out there, it's not a pro, so I can't output the 4K. So right now, Stadia, excluding my PC, is the only thing in my possession that can output games at 4K. And so I just felt spoiled, bro. It was just the best looking, so, and it's just so easy. I pick up this controller, controller do a little button input, and I'm literally in my game. It was just, I, I, I was spoiled. I'm telling you, I was spoiled. So now, throughout the whole experience of trying it out in my house, whether it be browser or in the TV, I had one pretty scary situation, but it ended up not being that bad. All right, well, I was literally mid cutscene. It froze and the whole thing shut off. I just pressed my, I just pressed the stadium button. Bro, so it just, it just completely shut off. And I don't know if I, look at that. The whole Chromecast just died. And the biggest thing here is my save. So I just played about, honestly, about 40 minutes to up to an hour of Tomb Raider, just starting. Am I about to have to restart? Let's see. Time with in the 
Whoa. Okay. Okay. So it completely froze and shut off, but it picked up. It picked up exactly, exactly where I left. <laughs> wow. This just gave me mixed feelings. Like, obviously that's annoying, but the fact that it doesn't matter is reassuring. And so honestly, since it wasn't like a stated connection problem, I think the whole Chromecast crashed. And that was a cool thing though. The Chromecast cached, crashed, but my my game didn't change anything. The only time that would have been bad if it was I was playing Destiny 2, maybe in the middle of a strike or something like that. I was playing single player, so it wasn't that bad, but that is something to point out. And like, again, contrary to what I first thought, the browser experience is literally the best because no matter what, we're gonna get into this about the TV input delay, but you know, you know what I'm saying? No matter what on the browser, your, your controller feels wonderful one and honestly the graphics stays the most i will say i feel like it screen tears a little bit more on the browser whereas my tv i don't know if it ever deteriorated in quality when i played it on tv it's pretty weird <laughs> how it did that so moving on we come to my parents house and honestly this was a place that i was really and very eager to try because there's a lot of devices first of all it's a bigger house than but there's one you know bedroom and there's a lot more devices going to be connected to it so this was going to be a nice little test so here i did the same i actually decided to bring my chromecast for the thanksgiving break just because i wanted to really try it out in the living room right so i tried it out on chromecast and browser at home and my speeds were about 91 down and i don't really I think like maybe 71 up and I, I'm, I'm failing to remember what it was when i was in my living room but regardless when i was in my room my my, my bedroom and playing on the on the uh browser i had 91 down so to start it off man the tv the living room experience at my parents house was by far the worst experience i've ever had on stadia bro i'm telling you the input delay you should have you should see some footage now was was pretty ridiculous like it's not that it was insane like i'm talking like a i move it and a minute happens until it finally re responds no it wasn't that bad but it was so bad that when you picked it up and you you started you're like oh whoa, whoa, whoa i don't think i can play this right if you struggled and tried really hard you could probably get through something but it just was not really playable in any sense but the craziest part is yes so you picked up the controller and you would have been like huh oh. but if you just looked at right if you just were watching the tv didn't know what was going on you would have been like dang this thing looks ridiculous again i think they have a 4k tv they probably have hdr as well so that junk looked insane at the time i didn't have anything but destiny so that's all i played but that's fine that looks way better than tomb raider definite edition and so this 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 was like, I was so confused. I'm like, what the hell is going on? And so on that, when that happened, it made me start, start thinking about the idea behind why we don't even, gamers like us don't even typically game on a TV. And that's because of the refresh rate or the latency it has, natural TV latency. So I decided to look this up to get a better answer. And actually, before I did all this testing, I had read something on a Reddit post about this concept and I, I can't find the original one but i just did a little google search and i found something else so this guy asked if the tv input like all my tv matters with stadia so like i just said tvs naturally kind of have an input delay to an extent they're not the best for gaming you can get some that have that ability to either switch to a game mode or just not have bad latency but that is the thing right so you add stadia on top of it it's just unnecessary you know complication regardless so it says if you use the stadia controller you will not have any more input lag because the stadia controller connects directly to the google servers and is not bound by your tv latency or refresh rate. what you might experience is visual latency because it already takes a while for the rendered picture to get to you and will and it will take a bit longer for the tv to display it but in any case, your actions will be registered when you do them and not influenced by the latency of the TV. However, many TVs have, I don't know, I don't know, get that last sentence though. So it's, he's basically just saying that like it is registering, but the TV itself is what's taking long. And I think that's what's going on. Now that TV is a nice biggish TV, but my dad got it back in like maybe 2015, maybe before that, right? And TVs move quick. TV tech is flying. A, a tv from 2015 is pretty outdated you know what i mean so it is what it is so yeah i think that's essentially what was happening i think that tv just had a nasty 
a delay of its own and i feel like i do remember that i feel like i played games on there and it's not been the best right so you add steady on top of it like i said it's just this unneeded complexity that's obviously not going to give you the best experience because contrary to that when i took this to my room i had my uh, my work or not my work sorry my, my gaming laptop and i had my controller and again in my room i had 91 down i'm telling you it was one to one and it was flawless i was playing i i, I max i soft capped my destiny character at 900 it's been forever like i don't play as much but for, i did that you know i grinded for a couple maybe a couple hours and i got to that point did a strike or two flawless no problems whatsoever again input input latency delay whatever was one to one there was none really and then the graphics of it just looked nice it was it was pretty magical like i have a gaming laptop so i felt like i was being disrespectful to an extent but bruh, I, like, I just picked it up, plugged it in, pressed one thing, and I started. And then when I was done, oh my god, bro, it's just the convenience is just nuts. So, the last destination is the hotel. And obviously, this is the place with the worst Wi-Fi. I was pretty hyped to try this out, but I know that it's not the best test because how many times do you try to do you know because for me sometimes i go to hotels and i can't even connect i can't even open up twitter and look through twitter on their wi-fi but let's just talk about it when i was in this hotel a Ve las vegas hotel they had about 15 up and like seven down i should have the screenshot on the screen now this was surprising to me guys 15 is by no means good but it is not that bad son in my house my home my parents house before we got new routers, I was working with 10 megabits up and down, right? That's all I was getting. And I was streaming. I was streaming and playing an online game. Now, granted, it wasn't the best, but I was doing all that. But yeah, you know the drill. Uh, 15 down in a hotel. I'm talking about Las Vegas Hotel. This place was massive. So there's a lot of people on the Wi-Fi. It was obviously not that good. <laughs> it was obviously not that good of an experience for Stadia. Green tearing, some glitchy sounds. It was, a, it was really glitchy in the sound department, right? But for some reason, ladies and gentlemen, I opened up Destiny, went into orbit, dropped on a planet, did a heroic event, walked around a little bit before I got kicked. <laughs> so it was like, it, it lasted for quite a bit. Now, mind you, again, while I'm playing it, it kept giving me that notification about your connection is unstable. It would go up and down. It would start, start a lag, but it opened and I was playing. I was doing things and I thought that was nuts. I didn't even think, like I said, sometimes I can't even get on Twitter on hotel Wi-Fi. So whenever this worked like that, to that extent, I was pretty impressed to an extent. You know, I was kind of impressed. And just the last thing to say about, it, you know, like I said, it's hard to, to judge it in a sense. And that's why I wasn't, I was a little iffy about this location because like, dude, I'm talking about thousands, tens of thousands of people in this hotel on this Wi-Fi. There is so much shit going on with it, right? And even then, I still think it's in time, we may be able to play in conditions like that, right? I think so. Right? I don't want to get too into that talk, but I did hear some things about Bethesda's own streaming service being able to do just that, right? Decrease the bandwidth needed and really make it so at a low level you can still play. So that's all I got to say on that. Let's talk about my experience as a whole. So yeah, a good connection setting, you're gonna have a false experience. And really that's the ex that's the setting Google envisions, you know, for its customers. And that's kind of what the people that they're trying to pander to, okay? So Destiny 2 and Tomb Raider, Samurai Showdown, Farming, all of those ran flawless. <laughs> no problems, it looked amazing, you know what I mean? It is what it is, man. I hate it, hate it as much as you want, but this shit is real, real and it's working. And I think the biggest thing with this, even in the other set categories, but it just never deteriorated its quality. The screen never was having any problems, it felt like. And I'm like, why? My input sometimes, but never 
the display. And so if we talk about a decent setting, it's still good. It was still pretty flawless, maybe one to two hiccups max, and it was very minimal. Like, oh, like I just had no problems besides the TV issue, right? And this one hit home a little bit because like, when I'm coming back home, whether it was when I was in college, regardless now that I have a job, when I was in college, coming back home from school to my, you know, to house, especially Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving break isn't that long, bro. It's like a week, if that, not really. It doesn't feel like it because you count the weekend. So usually it's a big debate. Do I bring my PS4 or do I not? I didn't have to do any of that, right? I just picked up this controller, threw it in my bag, and obviously brought my laptop that I always bring with me. And I had my full Destiny 2 experience with me. And so I can't imagine me being packed up when I'm here, trying to do other videos, things like that, going home, finally get, having time to play Borderlands 3, which I passed up this year. I don't gotta bring anything with me. I just bring my controller and I can play. Oh my God. It's, I'm telling y'all, this, this is the future. This is the future, man. Last but not least, the bad setting, like I said, I keep saying, it was bad. Like, it didn't really work, but it worked. And that was, that was the oddest thing, because I didn't think it should work. I was like, this should not work. Why? Why? <laughs> you know? But, um, and like I said, it's going to get better. Like, I promise you, I will mark my words. Mark my words. In, a, in the coming years, 10 megabits per second download. That shit will be very good to play game stream. Like, that's like... I think 10 is gonna be the bare minimum. The TV input delay and then like the bad Wi-Fi conditions, bro, they just don't really outweigh the overall experience and quality of game streaming, this, this simplicity that it has. The last thing I wanna talk about is just Stadia versus game streaming as a whole. Stadia, the Google Stadia, they're doing some cool things with their business model of how they're going to be selling and marketing uh, Google Stadia. But something about it, you know, there are some things about it that just are not good. They're just not positive moves, right? So with that being said, while it seems like my thoughts and everything I say is really about Stadia, like I'm hyping up Stadia itself, I'm really not. I'm talking about the concept of game streaming. These are just the first people to present it to me in like a official fashion, right? We have other things like on live PS now it's been out, but this one is its first time that it's its, its own full on platform right so that's that's kind of where my thoughts are and i'm just optimistic about that game streaming versus stadia and i think in due time when all these other ones come out because i just talked about bethesda i think they're going to adopt the positives obviously they'll have their own negatives but as a whole i think we're going to get one that is pretty good right they're going to have to if they really want to get the the market to, to you know to believe in it i guess and you know that's kind of why i bought the founders edition right it gives me this three month period i get the kind of starter kit to try this series uh, this um platform out right and kind of go from there so i don't know if i'm gonna renew my my uh pro subscription i don't know i don't think so unless they show me some good games so yeah depending on the interest of this video i may do like a frequent ask questions maybe we can dive deeper into this topic to talk about what's good about stadium what's not good and depending on what you guys feel we can kind of get deeper in this um, but I'm not really sure what the consensus is out there. So let me know if you guys are interested. But yeah, other than that's all I got to say. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Uh, let me know, guys. I, I really want to know, like, are you guys people who have good internet and just hate this? Or are you the person who has bad internet? So just obviously, you know, inherently hate this as well. Let me know. I'm very curious and I'd like to know. So other than that, that's all I got to say. And I'll see you all in the next video. Peace. I'm late for an appointment. <laughs> Bye. I'm a floss now when these people try to test If you in my way, I might have to put you to rest Yeah, I know it might sound complex uh, Everyone around me always wanna be the best uh, I'm a